In the 1970s, the Dutch Peruvian mathematician Maria Scholten de Ebnef wrote a book in which she claimed to have discovered, or at least rediscovered, an alignment of sacred sites stretching from the ancient city of Tiwanaku in Bolivia to north of the city of Cajamarca in northern Peru. Just like the St Michael's line stretching from Ireland to Israel, the alignment appeared to be incredibly accurate and covered a distance of around 1,000 miles, cutting across some of the highest mountains and steepest gradients in the entire world. The alignment had a precise orientation of exactly 45 degrees west from True North, following the line of the Andes mountain range. The sacred sites established along this way were for observational purposes. The god that manifested to the people of this region Viracocha was the imposing figure in the sky who gave rise to all other creations. The god, flanked by two other powers that could be utilised at will, the almighty being manifesting the squatter man and perhaps clues to this almighty rule can be found in the Viracocha question. Wait to hear this. Viracocha was the almighty being to the Incas considered the creator god he was the pharaoh of all other Inca gods, and it was he who formed the earth, the heavens, the sun, and the moon. The moon, of course, being a possible remnant from the destruction and creation of the asteroid belt. And when Viracocha was finished with his creation, he was believed to have travelled west across the Pacific, never to be seen again. In his absence, lesser deities were assigned the duty of looking after the interests of the human race, but Viracocha was, nevertheless, always watching from afar the progress of his children, from a deeper realm of space, still visible to observers who seen his light diminish. It was believed that human beings were actually Viracocha's second attempt at living creatures, as he first created a race of giants from stone in the Age of Darkness. However, these giants proved unruly and it became necessary for Viracocha to punish them by sending a great flood. And in the legend, all of these giants except for two then returned to their original form. Remember, there were giants on the earth in those days and also after that, according to the Bible. And perhaps the giants, the Nephilim, were not conscious creatures of the earth, but manifestations in the sky. The flood brought forth could be the wiping out of these beings of chaos in the heaven and also triggering a water flood on our planet as the order of the old solar cycle became broken. The intense synchrotron auroras were the observable, predictable flood as witnessed from the Earth, triggering Earth cycles as a result. Of course, the usual horizon is the evidence of these catastrophic displays before the floods came down. Below the scorched layer of the Usolo horizon, bones of extinct species are present before, but not after. Likewise is the discovery of stone tools below the horizon. This horizon is present in America, Australia, India, China and all over Europe, first detected in Holland. It's a global layer of scorched earth, proving without a doubt that a cataclysm occurred and that human beings survived it waiting out the event in the caves of our planet where we find the most ancient art formed from the mind of a human and petroglyphs are showing how the observers were able to observe the event during the terrifying prolonged ordeal that traumatised the human mind so much that we eventually forgot about it. Stories of the gods such as Viracocha are the clues to the happenings during this event but what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and thank you for watching.